and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, operators of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps burst two more illegal detention centers in Kaduna, rescue 11 people. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission seeks forfeiture of 23 properties linked to former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pension Reforms, Abdul Rashid Maina. Army announces capture of two Boko Haram commanders on its list of wanted leaders of the Kara Group as Nigeria Air Force jets target ice swap fighters on the fringes of Lake Chad in northern Borno State. And UK members of parliament reject government's Brexit bill timetable proposal as Prime Minister Boris Johnson threatens to call for general elections. On business news tonight, organization of petroleum exporting countries to discuss deeper oil cuts at upcoming meeting amid concerns over weak demand. On sports news tonight, Nigeria's handball team to face Angola, Gabon and Libya in the 2020 Senior Men's Nations Cup to be held in Tunisia in January. And from Abuja, INEC promises to ensure greater credibility and improvement on the 2019 polls ahead of the governorship elections in Bayelsa and Kogi states. The Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the interim forfeiture and the temporary forfeiture of 23 properties linked to the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pension Reforms, Mr. Abdul Rashid Maina. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission approached the court this morning seeking the temporary forfeiture of the properties. The EFCC also asked the court to grant an order for the publishing of an advert on the properties in the national dailies to enable anyone who has any reason why the properties should not be finally forfeited to the federal government to come forward and prove it. The motion is supported by a 30-paragraph affidavit and brought pursuant to Section 17 of the Money Laundering Act. Now, after granting the plea, the trial judge, Justice Fola Shade Giwa Ogubanjo, asked that the anti-graft agency returns to court for mentions on November the 19th. Meanwhile, a similar forfeiture has been slammed on three properties linked to Mr. Kola Aluko, that's a close associate of the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezani Alison Madweke by the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos. Two of the properties are located in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, while one is located in Lagos. The EFCC says two of the properties are situated at plots 3389 and 3390 Margaret Thatcher Close, a Sokoro cadastral zone, Abuja, while the third property, known as Avenue Towers, is located on plot 1391 Tiamu Savage Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. Justice Muhammad Lehman granted the interim forfeiture following an ex parte application filed and argued before him by the EFCC prosecutor Rotimi Oyedepo. The judge also directed the EFCC to publish the order in any national newspaper to enable any interested person show cause why the property should not be forfeited permanently to the federal government of Nigeria. The judge then fixed November the 12th for further proceedings. Now let's stay with the courts for a minute and 12 years after the commencement of trial of the former governor of Abia State, Ojo Zokalu and two others for alleged 7.6 billion naira fraud, the Federal High Court in Lagos says it's yet to deliver judgment and it's now set. Just as Muhammad Idris fixed December the 2nd, 2019 for judgment after parties in the case adopted their written addresses and made their final arguments. EFCC counsel Mr. Rotimi Jacobs in his final arguments asked the judge to jail the defendants as the prosecution had proved the allegations against them. He also told the court that contrary to Carlos' statement that Abia State did not have as much as 7 billion naira during his administration, information from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation showed the total allocation to Abia State under Mr. Carlos' administration was 137 billion naira. The defendants on their part asked the court to dismiss the charges, discharge and acquit them, insisting that the prosecution failed to prove its case. The former Governor Kalo, his company Slok Nigeria Limited and Mr. Ude Uduogo 
are also standing trial on amended 39 counts brought against them by the EFCC. And still at the Federal High Court in Lagos, the trial of the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshe, continued today with the testimony of a Zenith Bank official, Dr. Abiodun Oshode. The witness told the trial judge, Justice Chuku Jeku Aneke, how the bank took a bullion van to the Akure Airport in 2014 to evacuate a cash sum of 1.219 billion naira from an aircraft at the request of Mr. Abiodun Agbele, an aide to the former governor of Ayoshe. The witness also testified that a former Minister of State for Defence, Musiliu Obanikoro, was present during the operation at the airport. Mr. Oshode said after taking the money to the bank, Mr. Agbele supplied three bank accounts into which the monies were to be lodged. Under cross-examination, the witness admitted that there was no time that the former governor filled any teller dealing with the money. Justice Aneke has adjourned further proceedings to Wednesday, October the 23rd. Well, officials of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in Kaduna State have uncovered two new illegal detention centers in Zaria. Eleven people were rescued from them in those centers in the ancient city, with all of them in chains. Among the victims is an 11-year-old boy, while many of them are said to be suffering from acute malnutrition as a result of the dehumanizing conditions in which they found themselves. These latest raids of illegal rehabilitation centers in Kaduna State Tuesday morning now push the number to be busted in two weeks at four. Starved, diseased men and young boys. Some of the victims are said to have been here many years. Backs and ankles tell stories of intense abuse. Chains and other devices of restraint give a picture of the inhumane treatment they must have passed through in the hands of others in their attempt to force them to accept a way to behave. I'm from Oshun State. He about a relative of I that I that invited me here, that introduced me to Zaria. I said I should come over. That he promised me a job. That we will get in here. That we promised me an IT. That I can come over and do my IT over here. Look at the camera. So unfortunately, I was there. I was surprised. Just when he one brought me here, he brought me to that center. The raids were carried out by officials of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps (NSCDC). The state deputy commandant of the corps says the rescued, whose health are in serious jeopardy, are lucky to be alive, as three have died in the center. They are really in very bad uh, situation. But the worst situation is that they are operating this uh, rehabilitation center without approval. No information from anybody. They are just on their own doing what they want to do. They bring them, put them on chain, do whatever I don't know, which with investigation we will uh, eventually dig up more facts. These are the suspected proprietors of the center. They fail to show remorse. To them, it's all in the name of providing service to parents seeking reformation for their children. We were brought here because they accused us of beating the people in our center. We only beat them when they refuse to abide by our rules or when they refuse to read. Their parents are the ones who send them here. This thing that happened to us today, we take it as an act from God. The Deputy Governor of Kaduna State is here to see the condition of those saved. She describes the situation for what it is, promising that the government will not stop until others are shut down. A word also goes out to parents who seem to have forgotten where charity begins from. Um, one thing that's apparent here is, uh, like, the f families uh, or parents have somehow abdicated responsibilities and given that responsibility of uh, child bringing to some other persons who, for me, does not know the value of having a child. As more of these illegal rehabilitation centers are exposed, a lot of ground needs to be covered by the authorities to reorganize the thought process of those who have been through hellish conditions at these correctional facilities. And from the court to security, the Nigerian army troops have arrested 16 suspected Boko Haram terrorists, including two top commanders who allegedly took part in the attacks on Pulka and Gorza. 
The arrest follows a sting operation conducted by the combined troops of 26 Task Force Brigade, 21 Special Armored Brigade and elements of the Civilian Joint Task Force on Sunday, October the 20th, while acting on intelligence reports. A statement by the Army Operations spokesperson, Colonel Aminu Ilyasu, says some of the arrested suspects allegedly participated in the, in the execution of some Nigerian police personnel some time ago. According to the statement, the two commanders, Labwan Abubakar Galinga and Bayanga Mani, have been on the Nigerian Army's most wanted Boko Haram list. The other 14 are said to be mainly logistics suppliers, armorers and mechanics. While commending the theater commander, Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Olusegun Adeni, as well as the officers and men under his command, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuru Burete, asked them to sustain the pressure on the insurgents. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Air Force also says its troops have killed several Islamic State of West Africa province fighters at the Buruka Miram town on the fringes of Lake Chad in the northern part of Borno State. A statement from the Air Force spokesperson says the Air Task Force launched the attack based on credible intelligence reports on the use of the location to provide logistic support to the terrorists. The statement says before the strikes, over 35 terrorists were observed within the area. Afterwards, the aircraft launched the attack, scoring accurate hits on the terrorists and destroying some of the structures. The military has been engaging terrorists in a long-drawn battle in the northeast since 2009. Now, the Borno state government says it's reached out to 10,000 people in Morba, a local government area that's a former caliphate of the Boko Haram group, liberated from the insurgents. The affected population who had been seeking refuge in Niger Republic are said to be in serious need of food aid following their return to Damasak, the local government headquarter. But the returnees are faced with hunger after aid agencies withdrew from the area over concerns of safety. Men, women, girls and boys are returning to Damasak, the headquarters of mobile local government area Borno State, after fleeing their homes due to Boko Haram attacks. The state government says the returning residents number up to 10,000. Locals who feel it's safe to come home now rate the military high, citing successful operations that routed the insurgents from their community. Last year, three times within one week, they tried to attack us. But the soldiers stood firm, fought and killed all of them, and they never returned. It's been one year now. We do not have security problems, only farms and food. We do dry season farming of watermelon, vegetables and lettuce, but the flood has washed away our rice farms. Damasak, which is 190 kilometers north of Medugui, the state capital, was not only a known stronghold, but also a caliphate of the Boko Haram insurgents from where deadly attacks were planned and executed. Damasak liberation attracted aid agencies to help victims deal with the aftermath. However, the recent abduction of aid workers a few kilometers to Damasak has cast a doubt on the safety of the area, led to the withdrawal of aid agencies, resulting in hunger. The state government is reaching out to the returnees to meet their needs. Security is second in our 10-factor agenda. And this community are not receiving supply of food from donor agencies for a long time. So we are here purposely today among others, to ensure that the communities are well fed. All those that were given tickets, each and every individual should receive 25 kg of rice, 25 kg of maize grit, and 10 kg of beans. While all the women shall receive a rafa and a token 1,000 naira for them to sue their clothes. The people insist that they are safe and want help to deal with the hunger and other issues. Our governor sent for us because he wanted to know how we are doing. We are grateful and we are doing fine. Our problem has been the Boko Haram problem, but it has ended and we thank God. 
We in Damasak need food items and schools, and we thank you for the good things he has brought. But we also need drugs for our hospitals, and we want our markets reopened. The governor has also been meeting with local vigilantes and hunters whom he assured of improved welfare for their selfless collaboration with the federal troops in keeping their communities safe. In part two after the break, ICPC declares former presidential aide Okoi Obonobla wanted for failing to appear before it to answer questions bordering on corruption. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs> 